Greetings, this is Captain Henson, and today we'll be discussing Star Wars The Bad Batch, Episode 15, Return to Kamino. With me today is... Israel, back in the saddle. And Jedi Knight Luke. Right, as always, let's begin. Basically, this follows on directly from where War Mantle ended, and we actually see Hunter on... Crosshair and Company's personal vessel being transported back to Camino, where Crosshair intends to lure the rest of the Bad Batch into a trap. Right, let's go through the major points. Starting off, we have Hunter being transported by Crosshair. And it is here we see the Empire is leaving Camino, And we're also told that any of the Kaminoans that didn't want to work with the Empire were subsequently dealt with. And by dealt with, we basically mean you comply or we shoot you. Am I the only one who finds it somewhat ironic that as the Empire has the Kaminoans and clone cadets and so forth jump ship from Kamino, that Crosshair uses it as the place on which to lure the rest of the Bad Batch into this trap? Yeah, it is pretty ironic when you mention it. It's metaphorical. <laughs> And um, Hunter basically tells Crosshair, once he sees that Crosshair is using his communicator, that doing so won't be of benefit because the rest of the crew will know it's a trap. But Crosshair, since he was once part of them, knows how they work. And as such, knows that they will come back for Hunter whether they realise it's a trap or not. Yep. Then we come to the Bad Batch Bar Hunter obviously on Old Mantel, and Echo is repairing the ship, and Omega is very distressed, and is trying to hurry Echo up, but he just outright says to her, we're not going anywhere until the ship is fixed. But uh, once the Bad Batch get back on the ship, and the systems are all up and running, they pretty much head to where they're going without delay. So they get out of hyperspace, see that it's Camino in front of them, and Omega actually gave the rest of the team coordinates to a landing bay way outside of Topoka City that wouldn't be detected on the facility scanners. Yep, it's a secret tunnel system that leads to a secret laboratory where herself and the other Bad Batch members were created. Which was really nice to see. Yeah. Speaking of things that were nice to see, who do we end up seeing here, gentlemen? Her droid companion. Oh yeah, him. AZ-3. Yep, he didn't make it off-world. Nope. Yeah, I mean, it was nice enough to see him again. Didn't really care too much about him the first time, but eh, Omega was happy. Yeah, he was a surprise to see. And it's also here that Echo finds out that pretty much everything's been erased in the system. So, with the Bad Batch being the Bad Batch, and knowing that it's Crosshair they're dealing with, they tried to circumvent Crosshair's strategy in two ways. One, by using the floor-slash-elevator to enter the training room, rather than going through the main entrance, and by not bringing Omega, because... Rekka specifically thinks that Crosshair isn't after Omega. But um, as it turns out, given that Crosshair, you know, knows them, set a trap, and the Bad Batch are surrounded. You had Crosshair and the remaining support soldiers with them at gunpoint, and um, Crosshair does something a little bit unorthodox. Do either of you want to explain? Oh no, I insist. Okay, so Crosshair feels as if he wasn't truly given a choice as to whether to fight for or against the Bad Batch. Because when he started obeying the will of the Empire before the rest of the Bad Batch even knew about the inhibitor chips, they did become wary of him. Crosshair feels as if he was abandoned as a result of that. 
and he presents the rest of them with a chance to become a full team again with him, but they'd be fighting for the Empire to do it. And Hunter asks Crosshair, why should the rest of the team trust him? And what does he do? He He shoots. Shoots those teammates. And it should be noted that the Bad Batch noticed those reflective orbs. He sent the other one, I'm spacing on her name, to find Omega. And once she'd find Omega, Crosshair ordered her to send her off-world. It's as if he has a heart. And while that was going on, her and AZ hacked into the training droids and sent them up. Thinking and we get that. this really awesome scene of the Bad Batch fighting as a team again. Yeah. The original four plus Echo. But am I the only one who finds it kind of funny that Omega and AZ did have genuinely good intentions with activating the droids because they thought the rest of the team would be in trouble, but because they didn't know what was going on above, they unintentionally ended up causing trouble? Yeah. Situational irony. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and AZ even says to Omega, I think you may have activated a few too many droids, and Omega just says, yes, I can see that. Yep. (laughs) But instead of sitting around on the sidelines, Omega actually does get involved to help, which is nice. Yeah, it um, was. It's nice seeing her use her bow more often. Backtracking just a little bit, am I the only one who found the conversation between Hunter and Crosshair in the training room kind of ominous? Mainly because you had Hunter looking into Crosshair's visor without his helmet, but Crosshair was still wearing his. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It's almost as if someone who isn't willing to give up his humanity is talking to a soldier. Yes. Yeah. Symbolism right there. Major symbolism. But well, actually, so, now this, unless you have something else to add, is actually a good segue into the bombshell we get of the episode. Oh, yeah. That being, at some point which I think is hinted at to have been when he was burned by the engine. The yeah. Monitor. Crosshair oh. had his chip removed. Yeah. And oh, yeah. when Hunter asks when, he doesn't give an answer, but with how it's shot, it seems to be implied that it was removed when the engine burned him. Yeah, without a doubt, I would guarantee that's when he removed his chip. Because Because Hunter looks at his head and the burn mark specifically, which is where the chip would have been. So does that mean Crosshair's inhibitor chip was burned out of commission by accident? Looks like it. But here comes the double bombshell. When Hunter says to Crosshair, this isn't you, it's the inhibitor chip. Crosshair just says, it's not. This is who I am. Because with how he acts, he has zero regrets over all the terrible things he's done. And And can I just say, thank you for doing this. Because originally, the idea was, oh, it was the chip. That's why he's acting like this. But now, no. I mean, the chip certainly played a part in his actions, but he doesn't regret anything, and he's still going to stick with it. Yeah. It was Thank all based you on for morale. giving the character agency, because fuck the chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't too fond of the chips either, you know? I really liked how, even like in the first episode, it really kind of played as if it was a morale thing. Mm. So yeah, that was something right there. Yeah, with Crosshair here, he tries to tempt his brothers into joining the Empire. Yeah, And this is where we see... Both sides genuinely care about the bond with each other, but because of the condition, if you will, under which Crosshair is willing to accept them back, the rest of the Bad Batch aren't willing to do that. The trooper Crosshair sent to go after Omega calls in to Rampart, tells him that Crosshair has failed, she's able to escape, and then Tarkin says the thing! You may fire when ready. And so, we don't see the Bad Batch escape, but we see the city getting blown to smithereens. Like a visual fucking marvel, like, wow. Oh yeah. 
even like with before, like they just had like the the shots of like just the empty hallways and mess halls and and uh, even where the clones were being uh, incubated and stuff in yeah, like all that. I kind of knew where things were going. If you want to see a visual representation of the end of the Clone Wars in terms of era and TCW, well, look no further than this. Yep. You thought it was at the final episode of Season 7, but boy, was I proven wrong there. And One also, another that... interesting note about this is they make a specific note. I think it's, I can't remember if it's Tarkin or Rampart. They make a specific note that the cloning technology is now in the hands of the Empire. That was Rampart, I think. Yeah, so very much a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. One thing that I wanted to say was that Hunter actually made the choice to stun Crosshair. And I guarantee most people thought Crosshair was going to die. Yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah, I kind of thought so too, but... Throughout the entire episode, Hunter had tried to reason with Crosshair rather than see him as an enemy and wish to kill him. Yeah. Which, given Crosshair's lack of clarity regarding the things he's done and the way he's treated them for the most part since he defected is quite the surprise. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what that leads to in the next episode, because that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, they take Crosshair with them, and as Topoka City is being fired upon, it very quickly reaches a stage where they have to retreat back inside the facility, just as they get out. And we're all at the edge of our seats wondering how they're going to get out of this. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how exactly they get out of this. Yeah. Oh, and how Crosshair will react to the Empire, not only leaving him for dead, but actively trying to kill him. Rampart did say to the now one remaining trooper in Crosshair's former personal unit, let the clones die. So clearly Rampart and, of course, the rest of Crosshair's unit didn't see any value in him as a soldier whatsoever. Which is interesting, but... You know, you do as well as he did, and despite that, you're still just a clone, and nobody likes clones. In the end, Crosshair's devotion didn't even matter. Overall, this was a solid episode, really playing up that this is the season finale, and I can't wait for the part two. Yeah, I pretty much got nothing else to say. You guys pretty much took the words out of my mouth when it comes to uh, thoughts on the next episode. Bad Batch, this is the final countdown. You've given us a fantastic part one. And I know I've said in the past few podcasts, so oh, we're X episodes down to the finale. Don't mess this up. I'm confident that you will finish this on a bang. And with that, we come to the end of yet another Bad Batch podcast. With me today has been... CJ Roll, signing off. Good to be back on. And Luke signing off. May the force be with you, everyone. And of course, the always fantastic and dignified Captain Henson. See you all next time.